In this video, we're going to cover acceleration analysis of a multibar linkage. So basically, starting with position, you can take the time derivative to get velocity. And you take the time derivative again to get acceleration. So sometimes you have to use product rule, sometimes you have to use chain rule. So we're going to go through an actual example of how to do this using the dump truck. So now that we've done velocity analysis, we can do acceleration analysis. Important thing to note for acceleration as opposed to velocity is that typically your equations are going to be about twice as long because you end up using product rule in addition to chain rule. So almost every velocity derivative becomes two derivatives in the acceleration. The other thing is that now all of the theta dots and r dots have already been solved for, so those will not show up in your unknowns matrix. So matrix form for acceleration is going to be very similar to velocity. It's just j theta double dot equals ba. So first we need to take the derivative of the velocity scalars and then get acceleration. Now from the first velocity term here, so x dot, we have r2, s2, theta2 dot. We'll get three terms out of that one because r2 changes, sine of theta2 changes, and theta2 dot also changes. So that'll split into three terms. Now the r2 dot c2 will split into two terms. One for the r2 dot will become r2 double dot, and then the cosine of theta2 will also change. Then this third one, the negative r3, s3, theta3 dot, r3 is a constant, so that won't change. So, but th sine of theta3 will change and theta3 dot will change. So that's two things that change. So we'll get two terms out of that. So three terms plus two terms plus two terms is going to be a total of seven terms. However, we'll see that some of those will combine and we'll end up with only six terms. So let's get started. Take the derivative of the x dot equation. Now we can see here that this r2 dot s2 theta dot 2 also appears here, r2 dot s2 theta dot 2. So this will just become 2 r2 dot s2 theta dot 2. We can cross out that one. Now, similarly here, we have a negative r2 c2 theta dot 2 and a negative r2 c2 theta dot 2. So that will combine to be two. So now that we've got these scalar equations, we need to put them in matrix form. Now the J matrix will be exactly the same as it was before. So we'll just write that here. It'll be the coefficients of the unknowns because if you look here, J has negative R3, S3, theta three, double dot, which matches to here. Then R3 cosine theta 3 matches here. R2 S2 matches here. Negative R2 C2 matches here. So we'll just put those all in. Then the unknowns matrix is just going to be theta 2 double dot, theta 3 double dot. And then the B matrix is everything else. Remember that the sign will change when we move from the left side to the right side. So 
So that is acceleration. Now we're gonna look at an example of this in MATLAB. So we'll see how it's all programmed. You can see down here, I have put in all of the equations that we worked out and solved it using Newton's method. And then at the end, we're going to plot velocities, accelerations, and the velocity at the point. So let's run. Here, joint acceleration versus piston position. Um, you can see, so the blue is theta two double dot, and the magenta is theta three double dot. And you see the spike here. This is because of the singularity at the very beginning um, when it first starts out and it's completely folded onto itself. 